Okay, this is chapter two, test review. You should be a copy of this exact same uh, information in your student notebook if you have one of those. And we're going to go in the most missed first order. Okay, so the first question we're going to deal with is an analysis of cash. And on September 30th, the cash account of Value Company had a normal balance of $6,000. So there is our normal balance at the end of September. Normal means what is the way that you increase the account. And that's what its normal balance is. So the normal balance for cash, the way you increase cash is with a debit. So therefore, its normal balance is a debit. And we start with the ending of September, which is $6,000. During September, the account was uh, debited for a total of $13,200. So debits increase cash, credits decrease cash, and we have a debit here, from cash receipts, during September that increased the account $13,200. And the account was credited for a total of $12,500, and credits decreased the account, and these would be from cash disbursements. And what we're trying to find is, is the beginning balance of cash on September the 1st. So again, we're analyzing this asset called cash from the beginning to the end of September. And if the account went up 13.2 during the month and went down 12.5 during the month, overall the account went up by $700. Up by $700. Therefore, the beginning balance is $700 lower than the ending balance, therefore the beginning balance is 5300, which is 5300 plus 13.2 minus 12.5 equals $6,000. Question two, this time we're analyzing uh, an accounts receivable account. It's also an asset account. It says uh, on April 30th, Holden Company had a accounts receivable balance of 19.4. So there's a beginning balance, 19.4. Now that was April 30th. So this must mean if this is the beginning balance, this is the same thing as the, uh, let's see, April 30th is the ending of the month. So the same thing would be May 1st. So this must be going from May 1st to May 31st, or we're analyzing this account for the whole month of May. So let's see, we've got the beginning balance. During May, total credits to accounts receivable were 53, 53, 4. Um, so let's see, we have a, we also have an ending balance on May 31st of 14, 4. We got that May 31st balance was 14, 4 at the end of the month. So we had the beginning balance, ending balance, and it said credits to the account were 53, 4, which reduces accounts receivable. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the uh, amount of credit sales, which happened to be 48.4. Now let me go back a little, a little bit on that. If you knew that the beginning balance was 19.4 and the ending balance is 14.4, it looks like the accounts receivable account has gone down by $5,000. If it's gone down by $5,000, that must mean that the, this side is $5,000 higher than the debit side. So 53.4 minus $5,000 would be 48.4. And that would be what we're looking for, which is what was the amount of credit sales during May? Well, that's the debit to accounts receivable would be how you record a credit sale. You debit accounts receivable and you're going to credit sales over here on the owner's equity side. So that's what we're looking for. Number three. We're now analyzing, looks like, another cash account. And the first thing we're going to do is it says that uh, cash receipts of $8,500 were uh, during the month, cash disbursements of $9,600. And it says February 28th cash balance was $2,800. And that must mean we're analyzing this cash account for the month of fe uh, February. So we know uh, what ran through during the month as it increases and decreases. We also know what was the ending balance. So the question is now what's the beginning balance? Well, it looks like during the month, accounts receivable went up 85. It went down 96. Therefore, overall, it went down by $1,100. Therefore, the beginning balance is $1,100 higher than the ending balance. Therefore, the beginning balance 
is $3,900. Number four, we're looking for revenue and we're looking for revenue for July. So of these transactions, what are revenues? Receive cash from services provided to a customer during July. Yes, that's revenue. Uh, received $2,000 cash investment from Barbara Hansen, the owner. That's not revenue. To have revenue, you've got to have a product or service that you're selling to a customer. And this is investing in the business. This is not revenue. Number three, received $850 from a customer in part payment of his accounts receivable from sales in June. Well, this was a revenue in June, but not in July. So we care about revenues for July. So number three, not a revenue. Number four, provided services to a customer on credit for 75. This is a revenue. It doesn't matter when you get the cash. What matters is when did you do the work. So this is a revenue for July. And then we borrowed $5,000 from the bank by signing a promissory note. This is not a revenue. This is borrowing money from the bank. Receive $15 cash from a customer for services to be rendered next year. This is looks like a revenue because we got some money, but it's not a revenue because we haven't done any work yet to earn it. So this, in reality, this is a liability. So the only two revenues we have are right here. So the answer is $975 in revenue, number one plus number four. Number five, what is the balance of the cash account after these transactions? So. Here we go. Invest $30,000 cash and equipment valued at $20,000. All we care about is what affected the cash account. Cash account went up $30,000. Purchased $80 of all supplies on credit. No effect on the cash account because they were bought on credit. Paid $1,500 wages. That affects the cash account, makes it go down. Collected $2,500 commission on a sale. That increases the cash account, $2,500. Completed an art appraisal and billed the client $300. This is revenue, but it doesn't affect the cash account because we billed the client and we didn't collect any money. Add these three together, the cash account is going to be $31,000. Number six. At the beginning of January of the current year, Thomas Law Center's ledger reflected a normal balance of $54,000. And so it looks like we're analyzing a T account here. And we have the beginning balance of 54000 During January, the um, company collected sixteen eight from customers. So that would reduce accounts receivable by sixteen eight, um, And provide additional services to customers on account totaling thirteen five. That increases the uh, accounts receivable. Additionally, during January, one customer paid Thomas $6,000 for services to be provided in the future. This would not go anywhere in an accounts receivable account. This would be a debit to cash and a credit to some kind of unearned revenues for $6,000 has no effect on accounts receivable. So we're looking for really the ending balance of accounts receivable. So if you take the beginning balance, add what we increased by, which would be thirteen five. Subtract out the collections of 16.8, you get an ending balance of, in this case, $50,700. Okay, and again, that one customer paid us $6,000 has nothing to do with accounts receivable. And then another way to look at that would be beginning balance plus collections uh, plus services on credit or excuse me, minus collections plus services on credit equals ending balance. That's another way to solve that linearly as opposed to in a T-count format. So there it is. Number seven, during the month of March, Cooley Computer Services made purchases on account totaling $44,500. Now we're analyzing an accounts payable, which is on the other side of the accounting equation. And so it looks like, uh, let's see, we made purchases on account totaling $44,500. That would affect the accounts payable during the month, and it would increase it by 
$1,500. Remember, we're on the other side of the equal sign, so now liabilities are increased with the credit and they're decreased with the debit. So let's see what else. Uh, we paid $9,000. Cooley was paid $9,000 by a customer for service to be provided in the future, uh, which really has nothing to do with accounts payable. It's a liability, but it's not an accounts payable. An accounts payable is something that uh, you expect to be uh, paying off in 30 days, and that's really done. That's a liability again, but it's not an accounts payable. So also, it said um, we paid thirty-seven thousand four dollars of cash on its accounts payable balance. So that would credit cash over here and debit accounts payable thirty-seven thousand four hundred dollars. And then, if the balance in the accounts payable account at the beginning of March was seventy-eight three. And remember, the beginning balance is a normal balance unless you're told otherwise. And the normal balance of any account is the way you increase it. So the normal balance of an account's payable would be a credit because that's the way you increase this account. So here's what we have. We've got beginning balance 78.3. We've got increases of 44.5, decreases of 37.4. And when you run all this through your calculator, you should get an ending normal balance in accounts payable of 85.4. And then, like I said, the customer that paid us $9,000, that has nothing to do with accounts payable. And so there it is in a linear format. You can take the beginning balance, add the purchases on account, minus payments on account, gives you the ending balance of 88,500. Excuse me, 88, Number eight, what we're looking for here is the change in owner's equity during the year. Okay. First thing, on January the 1st, the current year, Bob's Law and Service report a uh, owner's capital total of 123.5. There it is. During the current year, total revenues were $97,000. That's going to be increased to owner's equity. And total expenses were 84.5. That's going to decrease owner's equity. Also, during the current year, Bob withdrew 21000 from the company. That's going to also decrease owner's equity. Another changes in equity recur during the year. If on December 31st, the current year total assets were 196, um, by the way, that means that our owner's equity, when you start with the beginning balance, add revenues, subtract expenses, and withdrawals, you get uh, a net. Well, actually, the net decrease in all three of these things are $8,500. Let's see, go back to this just for a second here. Um, see, they want to know a change in, in capital. Well, the change in capital would be just really combining these three pieces, which would be a decrease of capital of, uh, of owner's equity of $8,500. And so if on December 31st the total assets were 196 that's really an irrelevant piece of information. It has nothing to do with anything. Uh, all we'll have to do basically is just measure these three pieces, how they uh, combine together. They combine together to decrease this beginning balance by 8,500. Okay, number nine. After the above nine transactions, what is the capital balance of S? So all we care about is what affects owner's equity. So let's go through here. Uh, the Owner invested $25,000 cash in the business. That increases owner's equity by twenty-five. Uh, we gave $100,000 of equipment to the new business. That also increases owner's equity by $100,000. We paid uh, $2,000 cash, monthly rent. That will decrease owner's equity in the form of an expense, $2,000. Business got $16,000 for repair revenue. That will increase owner's equity by $16,000. Business paid $6,200 for salaries. That decreases uh, owner's equity by $6,200 in the form of an expense. We provided services on account $3,000. That increases owner's equity by $3,000. We paid the monthly uh, $500 utility bills. That will decrease uh, owner's equity by $500. Business got $3,100 in advance for, of earning it. That will do nothing uh, to owner's equity. Because it increases cash, it also increases law, the uh, liabilities, but it has nothing to do with owner's equity. I mean, with owner's equity. 
And number nine, uh, S withdrew five thousand dollars from biz from the business for personal reasons. That would also decrease uh, the owner's equity in this case by five thousand. Uh, so, that, like I said, the blue is not adding or deducting anything. That's just showing you that there's no change in owner's equity there, and this five thousand uh, dollars will decrease it. So now. When you combine all these pieces together, you get the owner's equity uh, capital balance. Rather, is going to be uh, one hundred thirty thousand three hundred dollars. Number ten, we've got these transactions after the above transaction. What is net income? All right. So, the only thing that's going to affect net income, that is a revenue or an expense, will be number three, which is we uh, pay two thousand dollars cash for monthly rent. The first two. Investing $25,000 cash in the business has nothing to do with revenues or expenses. And we gave $100,000 of equipment to the new business. Again, that has nothing to do with the revenues or expenses, but number three does. Number four, uh, business got $16,000 of repair revenue. That will increase uh, our uh, income by $16,000. Business paid $6,200 for salaries. That will also decrease um, our net income by $6,000. Business provided services on account $3,000. That should increase by $3,000 our revenues. And let's see, business paid $500 for monthly utilities. That's an expense, so that will also affect net income, $500. Uh, business got $3,100 in advance of earning it. That has nothing to do yet with revenues or expenses, so you ignore that. And if the owner withdrew five thousand dollars from the business for personal reasons that lowers owner's equity but has nothing to do with net income because only revenues and expenses change net income so when you combine all these pieces together we have up here you get that net income is going to be ten thousand three hundred dollars